Alrighty, so genetic disorders. Um, so again, hemophilia, uh, people who do not clot their blood well. Again, it's just two parents coming together that create a child um, that has the disease. So there's no microorganisms involved there. And then you have such other diseases as uh, degenerative diseases, which just means that the body is broken down over time. So with osteoarthritis, that is the breakdown of bone and joint. Um, and then cirrhosis is breaking down of the liver and it not working properly. Again, not caused by anything specific or like a microorganism. There's something else that's going on in the body. But here we're only going to discuss infectious diseases because those are what's caused by the microorganisms. And this is microbiology. So um, if you want to learn more about genetic and degenerative diseases, then you can take pathophysiology. All right. So remember way back when, when we talked about um, uh, Cox postulates, postulates um, we went through this process one be once before. Again, it's the same thing, just hitting uh, on the basis of it. So again, you have to have the same pathogen in um, every case of the disease. It has to be the same microorganism causing disease in every single person, no matter who it is. Um, and you have to be able to isolate it and grow it. And then from that growth, put it into somebody that's healthy. And then once that animal or human gets the disease, you have to be able to take it back out of them and make sure that it's the same pathogen. So in picture form, we have this here. So um, we start off with the organism that has died or has had disease caused in it has had a disease in it. We then draw blood or tissue samples and we're able to colonize a particular microorganism and identify it and then take that microorganism and inject it into somebody that's healthy um, and then see how it affects the healthy animal, whether it kills it or causes it to have the same symptoms. And then we have to be able to pull that same organism that we had with the first um, animal. We have to be able to pull that out again and it still be the same microorganism. Otherwise, that's not what was causing the disease in the first place. So how do we classify infectious diseases? So again, science is all about organizing things, which is why I love it so much. So we got to classify um, infectious diseases based on what they do. Um, so you may have heard symptoms and signs thrown around your whole life, but what does it exa exactly mean? So a patient may experience a symptom, which can be a change within body function, but it's what we call subjective, which means it's only what the patient can tell us. So you may say that you are in extreme pain, but I cannot tell you whether that's true or not. I can look at you and see that your face looks a little funny because you're in pain, but I can't actually prove that you are in pain. That's just something you're telling me. So that's subjective. And that would be classified as a symptom. Uh, malaise is also a uh, subjective symptom. And it just means you just don't feel good. So those days, you can't really pinpoint what's going on with you. You just don't feel good. That's malaise. Then we have what's called signs, which are objective changes. And that's something that as a physician or nurse or whoever can't actually see. So I can stick a thermometer in your mouth. We can determine that you have a fever. Or I can look at your ankles and determine, yes, they are swollen. Or we can determine you can't walk anymore, so you're paralyzed. Um, those would be signs. Something that we we can actually prove versus symptoms that are just what somebody else tells us is going on. 
And then so if you have particular signs and symptoms that go together, that go with a particular disease, you can call that a syndrome. Um, so every time you describe somebody that has a runny nose, sore throat, cough, and a fever can be described as having a cold because those signs and symptoms go with that particular disease. Um, so being able to diagnose diseases are made by looking at the signs and symptoms and then looking at lab tests as well. Um, to determine what exactly it is that you have. So we have communicable and non-communicable diseases. A communicable disease is one that's going to be um, transmitted from one person to another either very quickly or very easily, whereas non-communicable diseases are not going to be transferred from person to person. So with communicable diseases, you have things such as chickenpox, measles, the flu, tuberculosis, all of those are contagious and can be passed from person to person. Um, they're going to spread very easily. Um, and this, you know, depending on how dangerous the disease is, is going to determine how it affects our population. And then you have non-communicable diseases that are not spread from person to person. And these are going to be caused by something that just happens to get into our body um, that's not supposed to be there, but it doesn't mean that it's going to affect and or uh, cause disease in anybody else. So with Clostridium tetani, that is something we can get from the soil that's going to cause tetanus within us but we're not going to be able to transmit tetanus to somebody else. Or you can have a urinary tract infection from getting E. coli in your urinary tract, but you can't sneeze on somebody and give them a urinary tract infection as well. Um, so that's how we classify them. And you also have to look at the occurrence of them. And um, so we have what's called incidence and prevalence. So incidence is the number of people that get it within a particular time period. So that's going to show us how fast or how much that particular disease has spread within, say, a year or a month. Whereas prevalence is talking about everybody that has that particular disease within a certain time. Um, counting new and old cases. So if you're talking about AIDS, in 2012, uh, 55,000 people were newly diagnosed with AIDS, whereas when you're talking about prevalence, you had 117,000 people who had AIDS in 2012 total. That was talking about the new cases that were added plus the old cases of people who already had AIDS at that time. So that's the difference between incidence and prevalence. So then you can also um, organize it by how wide it spreads. Um, so we have sporadic disease, which is going to be something that just pops up here and there every once in a while. Typhoid fever being one of them. Um, I think in the news the other day, it was like, I think it was the measles or the, or is it mumps, I think, that maybe that popped up um, recently of people that had it, small handful of people contracted the disease that would be a sporadic one, and then it goes away. Yeah. Then we have endemic diseases. These are going to be um, in a particular population of people at one time. So the cold common cold usually happens in the winter time and can happen within several different populations but it's not crazy out of hand once it gets out of hand and it's um a lot of lot of people have it then we call it an epidemic so that would be like the flu so 